Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Calling All Devs, our weekly Q&A series where I take questions from you, the star citizen backer, and pose them directly to our developers, usually without makeup. Have you enjoyed the last week of, 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 of Pretty Pretty Princess Lando? I know I have. All right, let's get things started. This week, we are going to a Calling All Debs newbie with a question that probably the question that has come up for, um, for as long as I follow the project, and we're, 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 we're going to explore the question a bit, is maybe not get a, a precise answer. Well, you'll see when it comes up. Jake, how you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. Welcome to Calling All Debs. Thanks. Good to be here. All right. We're going to jump right into this because this one's going to take a while. My glasses are filthy. Uh, we've got a question. This is a question that has... has permeated the, the Star Citizen uh, experience since the, the project began. Uh, let's just jump right into it. How long, Jake, how long do we expect it to take to earn a ship in the finished game? <laughs> ah, that's a, that's a really good yeah. question. And it's also a really loaded question, mm -hmm. I think. Um, there are a lot of things that go into that. Um, the economy team is here in ATX, and we have a lot of discussion um, with that kind of thing. Um, I'd say that we can't really say exactly which of these ships will cost a certain amount of time, but I can talk to you about how, um, what kind of things go into the price of the ships and what the, goes into the economy behind them, where okay. players will be to buy these ships. So when when we look at the ships one of the things that we're looking at right now is not necessarily the the uec or the dollars to earn it but we're trying to figure out the time to earn it um so we look at items in such a way that we we don't say like oh it's a certain amount of uec or or a certain amount of this or that we, we look at and say oh it should be three hours to earn this thing or it should be you know one hour of effort and, and of course if you're a better or worse player that effort will be you know or that amount of time that you'll spend will be more or less, right? You can't just sit around and log into the game and, and do the wave emote for hours on end and still make the money required to earn, you know, whatever item you're looking for. Well, I'm out. <laughs> Jared's primary strategy right there. So. Well, not the wave um, emote. It would be a different emote. Ah, yeah. we're working on those emotes, you know. All right. All right, so continue. Sorry. <laughs> um, so a lot of things go into to what causes the ship to have a lot of effort. One of the things that we're really concerned about right now is making sure that the progression is correct. Um, we put out these ship prices to the community and we had a surprising amount or surprising feedback actually. Well, some people thought that the prices were too much and a reasonable majority thought that the prices actually weren't enough. So it's, the community is kind of divided on this based on the feedback that we've been watching um, in the Avocati and in the on the forums on the website. Um, but really there's there's a lot more to the economy that we have yet to add to the game. And that's part of the thing that, that players are probably feeling is that right now we put these ships out with the amount of effort that we expect the game to take. Um, Today. Well, actually, we we delivered them with what it will end up being okay. in the future. And that's a very hard target to hit because there's a lot of things that aren't in the game currently uh, that will be in the game there. And the reasoning behind that is that we really wanted to make sure that um, these... <coughs> Um, the different kinds of things, or, or the economy has a lot of things going on, and at some point we have to say, look, we got to aim for what the game is going to be, not for what the game is, and that's why we made the decision for this particular thing. Um, we are looking into ways to kind of mitigate the effect of having, you know, a very expensive, fully completed game kind of price on these ships right now, um, with very alpha ways to earn them um so that's one of the things that we're looking into and we're currently looking to the best way to do that gotcha so you're saying have these ships at what we anticipate their final costs to be and that's then right. adjust the ways that we can earn money in the alpha right now to, to an accelerated rate so yes. that so that people don't have to nickel and dime their way up to get them because there's only so many different opp opportunities to earn money in the game today Exactly. Well, I mean, consider the Stanton system, right? This is this is a relatively secure uh, solar system um, with very few like risky business opportunities to engage in. Like, there there should be a very low risk, low reward kind of thing going on in the Stanton system. Now, whether or not that's actually the case right now is a different story. But 
that's kind of what the the idea of this is and so we don't want to have these low level like courier jobs being the kind of thing that will finance a hammerhead right like so the the incomes that players see currently in the game are not sufficient to earn these ships and we know because that's what this system is about this system is not the kind of thing where you can start up a company and do that where we are we have to look at the big picture and see what kind of things are going to happen in the um, the very far strategic view of Star Citizen, not just what the game currently offers. So. Gotcha. So yeah, that's a. I think that's a struggle. We we find that struggle in every aspect of Star Citizen. It's it's the yeah. uh, 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 because running a live game development in the middle of our development <laughs> is uh, uh, presents a lot of unique challenges that most other projects would would never encounter. And that's yes. a, you, you can't just. You can't just target everything for how it's going to be uh, in the finished product because right. because 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 there aren't enough pieces. It's it's you have you have mining right now and you have you have some cargo stuff, but we were missing salvage and we're missing a, a, you know, a bunch of other ways for you to supplement your income. So so targeting everything that we do for how it's supposed to be later doesn't give us a very compelling ex experience right now. But at the same right. time. If you adjust everything down right now, then as the game develops, prices start to creep and everything, you know, as things are, and people are like, well, we go back in my day, a Hornet only cost this, and, right. and, and now it costs this and whatever. So there's, 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 there's going to be some struggle there. Always, there, 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 right. there, there's there's always going to be some some uh, uh, inflation for for lack of a better word as as the game continues. And, uh, but uh, and then of course there's just balance adjustments. There, there's you know that that's if sure. everything that we thought we were doing never changes. You know, and we're just expanding. But then as the game progresses, as people give our feedback back, you know, we're gonna like you said with the thing. Some people thought the cutlass should cost this and other people thought think the cutlass right. should, co should should cost this and we of course have our ideas and our internal math and whatever but the virtue of having a live environment in the middle of our development is that we can listen to our community and take sure. their feedback into consideration these decisions so uh it's 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 a challenge that affects everything and i'm not surprised to hear that it affects your work on the uh economy it, it is it is my work it doesn't just affect my work i mean that's that's the entirety of what we do. So, do you just like um, live in spreadsheets? That's I am the king of spreadsheets. I have so many spreadsheets that do so many amazing things. So, I it, that it kind of has a negative connotation sometimes. Like I know that people like to like to diss on designer, you know, spreadsheet designers that don't open the game. But you know, the truth is that we do open the game, right? We do experiences it. One of the problems with being an economy designer is that anything that I do in the economy is doomed to be anecdotal, right? I can't go in and say like, oh, well, how much is the cost of this material going over, you know, shipping from place A to place B? Well, if I did that, I'm not giving an accurate assessment of the system because I'm not playing in a server with, you know, hundreds of other people at the same time, right? Like, um, so it's something that we have to rely heavily on the community feedback to figure out, like, how does, how does our eco economy work? Um, how does it feel? Like, what are players actually experiencing? Because there's a big difference between what we hope the players experience and what they actually end up experiencing, right? And the only way that we can figure that out is by listening to the forums, listening to player input, seeing what the, like, how the economy system is performing in the game. Yeah, and and using this thing that we have, this live environment in the middle of our development, to our advantage. It's, That's it's, right. It's it's. I mean, we all we all have to log in. You know, we, we do these we do these uh, uh, regular play tests. We, you know, it's it's everybody's got organ. We have, we do these organized uh, events where all the developers get in and play. It's like that. Most people have no idea it's happening. It's like hi, we're there, but uh, it's it's important because we all we, we have to know. What the you know what the, what the the politician thing is you know what the cost of a gallon of milk we have to know what the cost of a car in a big Benny's is you know we have, right. we have to keep that I, I, in our minds at all time you know to to, to 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 know what the player experience is but then you know we go home and we watch the Twitch streams and the YouTube videos and and, and all this stuff and, and see the player experience and we get to do that during our development and that's such an amazing tool and yeah. I, I have to imagine that's a big part of of your workflow yes that's right like. We deal with, with the, the economy team deals with the, the design of large groups of people, like how the, the player base as a whole reacts to the game. And, and that's very difficult with a, with a live environment, but also very rewarding. It's, it's really cool to, to be able to look at feedback and um, 
and react to it. So. Uh, now, I'm going to have to ask because I, I don't just advocate for, for CIG. I also advocate for the, for the community. Sure. Uh, those spreadsheets, you, uh, you, you, want, you want to show me one? No, don't show me one. <laughs> I have to ask, but don't show me one. <laughs> Well, I could show you various amounts of interesting spreadsheets. I'm not going to show you one that shows you what all the best trade rates are, which I have. Um, but there are other interesting spreadsheets that um, show kind of the breakdown of what the ships are, which I also can't show you now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. And for those wondering why, why well, I right. thought this was open development. Why can't he show? It's because yeah. it, it's 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 temporary influx information, and we do try and because it's constantly influx and because it's constantly changing, we do try to be responsible with the stuff that we 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 show you. Now that's not just maybe at a future date, you know, when things are more locked in, we can we can crack open that shell a little bit more. But right now, while it's still in such a malleable form. We're not. I just I could I could hear the community in the back of my head when we started mentioning those spreadsheets. Them asking, like uh, like like E. T. and Elliot, like they're they're Elliot and I'm E. T. And I, <laughs> I, I I could feel it and whatever. So I had to ask and address it. But yeah, but um, sadly saying. I can't. But we, you know we do try to, and you know another reason that we don't uh, show all these spreadsheets is just because like part of the gameplay we feel is finding out what some of this content is right and, mm -hmm. and providing all the answers kind of really shortcuts a lot of that that entertainment of exploration and stuff that star citizen is supposed to be about so have you seen these apps that folks are making where that where they're figuring out the trade we routes love and them. The, yeah we love them that is like literally what we hope players would be able to do some of them are very accurate some of them are not so <laughs> how, how how hard is the how hard is it to to, to not just jump on spectrum and be like you're really close. You actually so close. You just need to do this and whatever. No, it's it's like watching it's like watching your friend like do a puzzle that's really fun, you know, but you know the answer already. So you're just like, oh, you're like cheering them on. Be like, yeah, break my system. Like, do it. You can you can figure it out. There's like a loophole right here that we we didn't address that you guys can totally get. So, I don't know. Cool. But anything else you want to you want to share, Jake? Sure. Yeah. Actually, there's a we didn't we never actually talked about what goes into making a ship more more or less expensive. Let's so do it. Let's yeah. do it. Um, so it'll be a one question calling all devs. Let's just do it. <laughs> so we uh, one of the things we take into account is the performance of different things compared to each other. There's a couple things going on. One is the actual items that or like the quantity of of items that go into it, and the other is kind of the performance of of the ship. In the end. Um, we want a better performing ship to be more expensive. That just makes logical sense and all across the board, right? It's so, typical game design 101. It's almost typical life 101. Like a lot of our, our stuff is translating life into what a video game would do. Well, if that were um, true, I'd make a lot more money than I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Chris. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what we end up doing is taking things like... Um, how many hard points does this have? You know, how many weapons hard points does this ship have? And then relate those into part of the value of the ship. So a ship that has more hard points ends up costing more. Or a ship that has more um, power plant sockets will that'll go into consideration. A ship that has more seats for crew members, right? A ship that has more room for cargo. All of those things get abstracted into kind of these value points um, that at the end of the day can put like actual value numbers on each of these ships where otherwise they couldn't be compared. Because I mean, like it's very difficult to say compare the um, the value of a shield generator to the value of 20 cargo slots right. on your ship. You know, that, that's kind of tough stuff to do. So what we do is we abstract that away, we turn it into value, and then we compare those other things to each other. And then we also put in how much uh, material costs we think will go into those ships. And that's how we get um, luxury ships like the, you know, the Constellation Phoenix costing a lot more because the materials that go into that end up costing a lot more. Okay. Just, so, um, so, so there, there, there's a there, there's there's a kind of a real world logistics thing. All the all the in, you know the, the, the quantifiable stuff, the port item ports and the and the, the seeds and stuff like that. And then there's kind of a a, a lore score, if, if if you will, the 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 the, the role in the in the universe as being luxury the uh, the luxury tax, as we see some people call it. Yeah, you know, yes. The eventual goal is to make those things be one and the same, however. Like, we want the Phoenix Constellation to be a luxury ship and to have really good reasons why it's a luxury ship. You know, like, to have, you know, 
um, all of the things that go into making a shield generator be a better shield generator. Like that all comes from materials that are mined on various planets that are so hard to get, you know, that are hazardous to store or that are difficult to process or whatever. And then behind the scenes, those are all put together in such a way with, you know, technology and different manufacturing plants and different, you know, manufacturers um, that actually translates from the effort that it takes into the value of the thing. So we don't want to just have shield generators that this one's better eh, just because and why does it cost more Eh, because it's better you know it's kind of a circular argument what we want to do is really link that to the entire economic chain all the way down to the rocks that these things are mined from we want those to have better qualities you know that that influence and inform the performance of the items and then go into actually being better on those ships and then when you look at the ship in the end it's just a bunch of materials and a bunch of processes applied to a ship that comes out to be, you know, and a bunch of labor tacked on that comes out to be the price of the ship. So that's what we're working towards. We're working towards all of that being making perfect logical sense. <laughs> it's going to take a long time to do, but that's the goal. That's what Chris wants. That's what we want. So yeah, that's what we're aiming for. Now, it's no surprise that Chris wants it granular down to the materials right. used to make the components that come standard inside the ship. That's right. Um, is there, uh, I, I grew up as a baseball guy. I worked in baseball for a number of years. Sure. We talk a lot about intangibles the, 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 because baseball is a very number and stat specific sport, more so than any other sport in the world. But there's always that, that last column, the, the intangibles, the things that can't be quantified. Uh, how do you factor those things in, into, into the ship, into ship costs or the economy? We try to make them tangible is the answer i suppose it's um like for instance it's a very challenging task where we constantly have to look at all the things that add value and we have to really assess what the value actually comes from for instance um while doing the the ships one of the things that we scored was the um arc range of different guns that were available on it um and that's kind of hard to put into a flat number you know like right because that's a, a very value judgment kind of a thing, but you know, ended up putting a, n- a number on it so that you can definitively say this thing has better arc compared to to this ship. The joke going around the kind of the office is that you know, like Jake frequently puts value on on human life or you know, love or or other things that should never have numbers. Is the kind of thing that that I regularly have to put numbers on. That's kind of kind of the name of game the game for my job. So. How'd you get that job? Did you was it a short straw or did you just lose a bet? Or? You know, I I love it. Like I am super excited. Economy is always the kind of thing that that I really get into playing games. I've been fascinated with it for MMOs since forever. I was the I was the dude that was back in town crafting stuff and um, you know hunting materials and, and that kind of thing. Like I, leveling is leveling is cool, but man, economy that is <laughs> that is where it's at. So. <laughs> Jake the Ferengi. Yeah. All right, Jake. Well, uh, gosh, I think that's it. We're, we, uh, uh, this has turned into a, a special edition calling all devs. Jake, uh-huh. uh, uh, Jake edition. Um, hmm. All right, man. That's it. Uh, obviously, you know, there, there's, there's a hundred more questions to do. Um, we'll see if we can't schedule an RTV sometime next year. Uh, sure. because, because this is like December by the time this airs and whatnot, so uh, right. you know we'll see if we can schedule an RTV and have have a, op- open some open yourself to some questions from some backers and stuff. If that's sure. amenable to you, <coughs> that's totally fine. That would be awesome. I'm not going to um, put a specific date on it. I learned that lesson last year because schedules change and whatever. But we're 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 gonna we're gonna shoot for an RTV with Jake Muley next year. I rarely have. Um, Don't say it. it, it I. I I often have um, strategy tasks, so they can be they can be moved around. There you um, go. Having tactics tasks or fires, I do have some, but they're they're usually sparse enough that all right, kind of make it happen whenever. So. All right. Well, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 discuss after the new year and see see if we can we can't put together an RTV and expose you a little bit more to the community. Sure. There, there ones. All right, man. It's fun. I I love talking to the community. I need to get the on those farms more. Because getting their feedback really is the, like the coolest part. So. 
All right, man. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much, right. dude. Thanks, Jared. All yeah. Right. Take care. All right. Thanks so much, Jake Muley. Now we got time for one more question. So we're going to go back to a past version of ourselves and an extra question that didn't make it into a previous show. It's uh, Chad McKinney and a question about physicalized inventory that I think you might be interested in. Uh, take it away, past me. All right. Thank you so much. Up next, we got Chad McKinney here with a question about physicalized inventories. Chad, how you doing, man? Doing well. Good to hear from you. Yeah. I got a question for you. We're running low. Luke, Luke Press, Luke, Luke Davis took like 14 minutes, so we're running short on time. I, I love him. I'm, I'm not gonna give. Him, I'm gonna give him shit afterwards. But um, anyway, uh, it says. Uh, uh, but the but the my boss is like you gotta keep the show in that thing. And I'm like I'm trying, but I, I, the information has to flow. All right. What are the plans on how physicalized inventories will be implemented? For instance, what are the tier zero plans? And what are the future plans? What are the plans? Talk to me about plans for physicalized inventory, Chad. Uh, it's a great question, and uh, it's, it's something it's all, that... It's all right. Let's not, let's not inflate their egos. It, it's a fine question. That's it's a, a fine it's question. It's a purposeful question. Uh, it, it's something that we've been thinking about for a long time, and I have had on my mind for a long time. With 3.0, we did a really big push to increase the uh, level of persistence in the game. Uh, and this included um, some work to get, for instance, loose item persistence working in ships, which is necessary to get cargo working. Uh, however, we've known for a long time that we, we have this kind of, you know, trick that we're rely relying on the giant magic bag of holding that the player mm -hmm. has, where you just kind of stuff everything and you just kind of pull it out. Where was it? Uh, and so, yes, physical inventory is where we're headed. So we want to have it to where you know, you, you don't have this magical place where all your guns are stored. You know, you have it on your your person or maybe in a bag that you're holding. And if it's not there, then, well, you don't have physical access to it, so you can't equip it. Um, you may own it. It may be in some location that you own or a ship that you own, but that doesn't mean that you can equip it. And we want to start using the ships, the ship storage, uh, HABs, physical locations, you know, eventually the players own themselves as the kind of uh, physical storage. Um, however, this kind of starts to get into something that we're also working towards, which is global persistence, which itself is pretty closely tied in with uh, server streaming and server meshing. So actually, these are big topics that we're starting to look towards now that we got object container streaming um, starting to look good on the client. And now that we're considering what server side streaming needs to get working, actually, one of the big things is global persistence. So we need to be able to stream out parts of the universe on the server. And in order to stream it in correctly, that means actually that place needs to be persisted out correctly. So that actually is going to help for physical persistence and physical inventory, because that means that if I leave something somewhere, say in an outpost, you know, it's still going to be there if I come back next week, potentially, unless somebody took it. So the plans are we're going to do it. We're, we have some ideas. We're going to uh, increase our global persistence. That said, you know, some fine details about like, can I use my uh, PMA app in the Moby glass if I'm standing next to the locker? Do I have to physically take it out? Things like that. Those details, you know, they're still a little bit in the air. I think as we get closer to working on it, we're going to hammer down those kinds of details. Mm -hmm. But we're working on the big tech that's necessary to, to deliver on it. And uh, it's not something that we've forgotten about at all. Cool. Uh, so I imagine it's something that people are going to want to keep an eye on the public roadmap for as far as when they're going to be able to when, when, when they can expect things like global persistence and then the persist and then the physicalized inventories to yeah. make their way into the star citizen persistent universe. Yeah, the other thing that I'll add just quick more uh, quickly is that in addition to kind of the, the core system work to get the persistence behavior working, there's also a, a lot of other miscellaneous work surrounding it. So that includes like any kind of item game code that needs to be written for maybe like lockers uh, and then also actor code that needs to be written to do any kind of the carrying logic uh, to, to pass things back and forth. We have some of that, but I think there'll be more as well as some animation work that's going to be necessary to do that like smooth locomotion in the transitions with items being passed around to these things. So there's there's work to go around. Yes, we're, ar stuff. we're already seeing people carry big bennies all over the, the, the Stanton system right now. 
uh, it's it's taken the it's taken the community by storm. I, I watched a stream yesterday where somebody just spent a good four hours carrying a drink that they got from the bartender <laughs> everywhere they could possibly take it in the in the uh, star in the stand That's system great. as it is today. So yeah, I think I think global persistence will be a will be a huge step towards towards you know. Watch, watching people, you know, like hide things behind places, like go to the the farthest corners of of of, of Nick's or whatnot, and hide something there. And like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna come back like a week later and see if it's still there, and go away and play the rest of the game, and then come back and find the stuff still there. It'll be really cool. All right, man, that's it. That's all I got. I'll let you get back to work. Cool. Thanks. All right, take care. Good job, Pass Me. Well, that about does it for this week's show. A special thanks to Jake Muley and Chad McKinney for appearing on the show with us this week. Remember to submit your questions for consideration each and every week up in the thread, up on Spectrum, and don't forget to vote. So for calling all devs, I'm content manager Jared Huckabee, and we'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.